We are training like the pros today, and you might be shocked to find out that many of them turn to yoga to balance the stresses of the playing field. Joining me is yoga coach Gwen Lawrence, who works with many professional athletes. Speaking of the devil, we are still joined <laughs> by Rodney Pittman, former, former Washington Redskins lineman. What are the yoga moves that are specific to, I guess, you know, a wide range that we could do and our viewers at home could, could do to train like the pros when it comes to yoga? Well, I thought we'd do some long, deep holds. This is one thing I, I do with my athletes because not only getting deep, it just increases your flexibility a little bit quicker than mm -hmm. quick holds. I know you probably train and just do... Mm. And then back you know, like, <laughs> you know, just really short ones. These are long, deep holds. So they also work your mental toughness right. and your focus because you can't quit on the field. You're not going to be able to quit in my pose either. Definitely. You're going to find a way to stay and be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. So I thought we'd start in pigeon pose, which you might have already done and just know is a different name, but its roots are based in yoga. You're going to come onto your hands and knees. And we're going to, let's start with our, probably our tough side. Are you all righties? I'm all right. I'm all righty. Okay. So we're going to slide the right leg forward. Left leg's gonna be back as far as you can. Now, instead of that being 12 o'clock, we're gonna bring it out about two o'clock. And believe it or not, my high school kids don't know what two o'clock is anymore because they're all digital. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, two um, o'clock is two zero zero. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually in time, this lower leg will be parallel to the front edge of your mat, but there's no force going on here. Right. It is what it is, okay. go as far as you can. And then you're gonna keep your hips in center. That's really important. So you don't wanna be like that. And you're going to come down onto your forearms. I like this because I'll, I'll tell you why. Having Rodney struggle over there along with me is making me feel a lot <laughs> better, Rodney. Isn't it? I know. I love it. <laughs> I've, I've reduced some big men to tears, I'll tell you right now. So we do this for a three to five minute hold. Mm -hmm. Oh, yikes. Right? Deep glutes. So whether you're, you know, workout, yeah, and, yeah. you know, squats, lunges, you just want to get those glutes open. Mm. This is medicine for any kind of um, sciatic pain because it opens piriformis so it releases that nerve. Right, right. And How's the medicine tasting right now, uh, Rodney? It's a little difficult. <laughs> I'm putting it in me, Jeff. So let's, let's stack, let's make two fists, stack them and just rest your head. The, the jaw muscles are directly related to the hip muscles, uh, the hip joint. So if they're really tight and constricted, you're not going to get the range of motion, you're not going to get open. And the other thing about this pose that I think goes across the board, men, women, athlete, non-athlete, is there's been orthopedic studies done that say the more open and supple the hips are, the less strain and stress on your knee. Because if your hips can absorb the poten potential energy of Rodney attacking them or somebody hitting. You know something? I'm always telling Rodney to get more supple hips. And when I say that to him, he looks at he me funny. He takes it weird. Yeah, I don't know. He gives you a winky face. <laughs> but you are 100% you are correct. So if those yes. hips can absorb some of that shock, the knee, which is the most vulnerable, you know, will be able to be safer longer. And then to come out of it. So like I said, this is normally three to five minutes. Right. Oh, obviously, right? we're going to move things Breathing, focusing. Uh -huh. You come up. We're just going to mix in a little quad stretch while we're here. Oh, just to expedite <laughs> things and bring that heel as close to your butt as you can. Good. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> and, and then three to five minutes. Right. Yeah. No, this one, not this one. Oh, okay. Then you're gonna let it go nice and easy. Okay. Okay. Another key one. You're gonna press back, come out of it. You might need a little rebound time. Just walk it out. Obviously, you would, you would do the other side. Okay. But I'd like to take you through another one. Another um, love to hate. For, the, for my athletes. So quickness, agility, you know, being able to change direction on the dime is important for athletes, even for people just, you know, weekend warriors on the hoops court or whatever. So we want to open up the ankle. Mm -hmm. We want to have the ankle have more range of motion for more power to push off and to absorb shock as well. And this is great because Rodney's actually one of the master trainers at Halavi Life, my gym. Okay. And we work with a lot of professional athletes. And this is one of my go-tos, ankle mobility is oh often God. Horrendous. Yeah. Horrendous. And it'll yeah. ruin everything. It'll ruin their workouts in the gym, their performance on the field. 100%. So show me what I can do. Help okay. me. <laughs> so you're going to come to kneeling. And now what's important is hips are going to, um, knees are going to be about hips width apart, which okay. means right out of the hip joint. So a lot of guys like to be like that. Mm -hmm. I want you to be like that. What we're going to do, it's a little bit different, is we're going to tuck the toes. I'm just going to go sideways. We're going to tuck the toes under. Okay, okay, so you're good. You want the lower leg to come directly out of the knee as well, so you're not torquing the knee in any bad way. And with the toes tucked, you're going to go ahead and sit back. Oh, oh did you hear that? <laughs> that was my knee celebrating. I saw sparks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this is a two to three minute hold, opening up the plantar fascia, right. Achilles tendon, sure. calf, and the toes. So you get more power to push off, better ups, right? And 
this may look easy, but yeah. Hey, no, Rodney, I noticed that there's about 10 inches between <laughs> your bottom and your heel. I'm going to have to get on you about that. Look, at, this is the first time I'm the more flexible guy in the room. I love this. So really, we want, yeah, butt to be on there. Yep. Yeah. And then there is always a place to go if that's okay. You're going to bring your hands behind you. If that's okay, you're going to go all the way down to your forearms. Oh, I, I, I feel, I'm, you know okay. what, I, I think I'm good right here. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you what, I'll do that when I see you deadlift 600 pounds, okay? <laughs> I'll, I'll go proportionate. Listen, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me. Rodney, thank thanks you. for hanging, because I know you were definitely out of your comfort zone. <laughs>